everyone. My name is Jessica Montero, and I am an information technology management graduate student here at FAU. For this presentation, I've decided to choose a topic on security and privacy issues in the healthcare industry. I think that this topic is specifically relevant considering the technological advancements we've made in healthcare in the past decade. We have also seen a greater quality of healthcare and the ability to provide more healthcare to more individuals due to these technological advancements. In this presentation, I will discuss some of the important key points which I have also laid out in my report. To begin, I will start by giving you a better understanding of the privacy and security in the healthcare industry and what has come from healthcare going digital. Then I will be discussing HIPAA, the largest privacy law protecting patient health and health information. After, I will touch on electronic personal records, sensor networks, and how these two systems work together in healthcare. Finally, I will discuss who, what, when, and where all of our patient health data is being stored, why this causes security issues, and how good training and management are key factors in mitigating these issues. I will also briefly touch on some of the largest healthcare data breaches in history and wrap up from there. Change is becoming inevitable in the healthcare sector. Digital health and patient data are the new norm, and it might be fair to expect more digital changes to the healthcare sector in the near future. These changes have come from changes in lifestyle, the creation of new applications and software devices, new medical treatments, and an increase in focus on the quality of healthcare. This new wave of digitized healthcare has brought an increase in the volume of complex and the complexity and the amount of data. Recently, technological advancements have created a more proactive environment in the healthcare system. For example, real-time monitoring of patient vital signs through embedded sensors allows doctors and nurses to be alerted if a patient's vitals are irregular. Also, healthcare digitization with electronic patient records, or EPRs, has also allowed hospitals and the healthcare companies to provide more complete, accurate, and shareable healthcare data to improve the healthcare system. As the leaders in healthcare move from a volume-based to a value-based healthcare model, big data will play a huge role in this transition. These real-time analytics will help benefit the quality of patient care and overall help the healthcare system. But with an abundance of data comes a new challenge how to protect all this data. One of the most important rules governing the rights and privacy of an individual's health records is HIPAA. HIPAA stands for the American Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. HIPAA is a doctrine of rules which are to be followed by nurses, doctors, hospitals, and other healthcare providers. The goal of HIPAA is to guarantee that all patient accounts, medical records, and medical billing meet certain standards in regard to the privacy of the information. HIPAA also ensures that all patients are able to view their patient healthcare data, make correction to any missing or incorrect data, and most importantly, be informed of who is viewing their information and how it will be used or shared. As healthcare becomes increasingly digital, there are needs to be more relative policies to protect personal health information. Although HIPAA governs nationwide, each state has its own differing rules and regulations as to how health, health data is kept, who owns the data, and how it can be shared across healthcare industries. For example, HIPAA has no rule regulating the consent a doctor needs to send patient information from one doctor to another for treatment purposes. While some states may have stricter laws in regard to the transfer of patient data, the increase in the use of digital patient data will make it harder to regulate how that data is being shared. Moving on to sensor networks and electronic patient records, these two systems have played a key role in the transition into a more digital healthcare world. EPRs are a digital version of a patient's paper chart. They are real-time patient records that make information available instantly to its authorized users. EPRs can contain a patient's medical history, medications, treatment plans, diagnosis, 
and laboratory and test results. The biggest benefit of EPRs are that they allow medical information to be shared across healthcare providers, such as hospitals, laboratories, pharmacies, schools, and more. EPRs typically contain information like physician's notes, MRI results, x-ray results, and prescribed medications. EPRs drastically reduce the number of legal errors and inconsistency across the transfer of patient information. EPRs can also be backed up more easily than paper records and take up significantly less room than the physical patient records. Sensor networks have also contributed to the new age of digital healthcare as well. In recent years, there has been a great emergence of sensor networks across all types of healthcare. Sensor networks have enabled the early detection of clinical deterioration through real-time patient monitoring, enhanced first responders' ability to respond to emergencies, improve the quality of life of the elderly through smart environments, and open way for large-scale field studies of human behavior and chronic diseases. Sensor networks include wearable devices like pulse oximeters and electrocardiograms, and non-wearable devices like ambient temperature and humidity sensors. In most cases, these systems allow data to be sent back to a local base station using Zigbee, Bluetooth, or other technologies. Once the data is sent to its base station, typically a personal computer, it is evaluated and sent back to the sensors. If the data appears abnormal, for example, a vital sign that reports too high or too low, the base station can send the data as well as an alarm to the central monitoring station. This allows the healthcare state providers at central monitoring station to be alerted and provide the care necessary to the patient. This transfer of information is done through the internet and involves minimum use of the patient. This allows patients to conduct their normal life while still allowing them to be monitored at all times. While both of these systems have helped the digital healthcare industry, the real benefit comes from the two systems working together. This process is quite seamless. When a patient's data from their particular sensor network is sent to the central monitoring station to be analyzed, the information can then be sent over to the electronic patient record and stored for use later. This information can then be used by doctors to make further decisions on the patient's current health, send it to the patient's different healthcare providers to use it as needed, pull up as a reference so the patient may have a record of their own updated information, and much more. Having these two systems integrated electronically not only allows the data to be viewed and sent out easily, but as mentioned before, it significantly lowers the amount of physical space needed in hospitals and other healthcare organizations. This also saves the healthcare organizations tons of money. Oftentimes, many people are concerned about their privacy and believe their information isn't actually private. Upon researching several relevant articles, it seems as though a lot of our data is not actually completely private to us, and in many cases, is shared without our knowledge. But is that our fault, or are we possibly giving consent without actually being aware that we are? I hope to hear some of your answers in the discussion. Social media platforms, wearable devices, apps, and more all have the ability to collect health data that can be used for ad advertising purposes and other consumer opportunities. And not only are your healthcare providers to blame for this, some of the biggest tech behemoths have been in the healthcare world for years now. Apple released its first Apple Watch back in April of 2015. Since 2015, Apple has been investing its time in the health sector. Amazon also quickly jumped on the train three years later in 2018 when they posted a job application for a HIPAA compliance lead on their website. Less than a month later, Amazon had grown their healthcare team to more than 30 people. So do you know who really has access to all your data? Do any of you wear smartwatches that track your fitness or something of that nature? You can share your response in the discussion section if you'd like. Next, I would like to discuss the topic of healthcare data ownership and where your health data is being stored. The answer of who actually owns your data can be a bit unclear in many cases. 
This has become the topic of many large recurrent lawsuits and cases filed in the U.S. Although HIPAA states that you are the owner of your personal health data, many times your doctor or health insurance company will not formally ask for your permission to send your information out. This is because when you usually go to a doctor for the first time, they will have you sign some sort of an agreement. This agreement many times is overlooked and the patient just signs the paper without actually understanding the agreement. How many times do we just sign paperwork that we don't actually read? I know I'm a victim of this. Another issue many face that I mentioned before is that HIPAA is only a baseline framework. Many states have their own rules and regulations that differ from other states in regarding the privacy of health information. It is important that you understand your state's specific regulations. As for the tech giants of the nation, their goal is to do what they have been doing in their other industries to healthcare. Google has been partnering with Ascension, one of the major medical institutions of the states. Through this partnership, Google is able to get a hold of tons of patient records from Ascension. Google also acquired Fitbit for $2.1 billion, allowing it to access large numbers of health data from its users. Amazon similarly has shown interest in the healthcare sector and too has access to many medical databases in which it provides its cloud services for. In addition, Amazon offers downloadable databases for its clients. Furthermore, Apple has been dabbling in this space since 2015, as mentioned before, and is even using information from its health app that comes pre-downloaded on the iPhone. Moving on to the security and privacy issues involving our health data, the authors Thora Johnson and Johnny Viber break these issues into four main points. One the tension between data growth and analytics and data minimization. Two, handling connected devices and mobile apps. Three, creating effective cross-functional privacy and security teams. And four, effective and tiered vendor management. Data growth is happening everywhere as we have shifted to a more digital age. Big healthcare data can be good or bad depending on how you look at it. The more access to big data, the better quality of healthcare doctors are able to provide as they are able to study this information and make more accurate decisions. Even the big tech giants, you can say, have been using your information to benefit you. Just last year, Apple was able to detect a bicycle fall from an Apple Watch wearing cyclist and call for help. But on the opposition, this can also mean that legal and compliance have greater concerns regarding the proliferation of data. The more electronic personal health information, the more it has to be maintained and protected as sensitive data, which must be assessed and audited yearly. The risk can be mitigated, though, by stripping all of the personal health information of its 18 statutory identities. If it becomes completely unidentifiable, the data is no longer considered private health information and will no longer be subject to the rules and regulations of HIPAA. The healthcare industry is also seeing more connected medical devices and mobile apps as ever before. A lack of security of these devices could lead to oversight by the FDA, and if the vulnerabilities are large enough, it could lead to litigation risk and defective devices. It is the responsibility of the organization creating these devices to have an effective management team to manage the developers, engineers, information security team, and lawyers, in order to create a usable device that follows government regulations and privacy laws. It is important that the team also discusses where the data will be stored, who will be able to access it, and how their system will be protected. In order to achieve this, the organization must focus on training and governance in order to create an effective cross-functional information security team. The training must be directive and active and be specific to the type of data you handle. Training should be team oriented so that your team can work together and not against each other. Furthermore, having a thorough doctrine of security and privacy rules for your team to study and familiarize themselves with is vital. This allows the whole team to be on the same page of what they can and cannot do. 
Finally, upper management is key in having a successful and safe product with a successful information security team behind it. Most, if not all healthcare organizations rely on third parties to provide some of their most important services. Many of these third parties must have access to sensitive data to do their part. In order to assure they aren't taking advantage of this, ensure vendor management and other upper management apply the appropriate program. Provide contractual provisions so that the third parties are aware of what they can and cannot do and put in place an effective program laying out the organization's privacy and security policies. Lastly, the organization should decide the type of monitoring and security practices it's going to need based on its vendor, whether that is an audit or another form of monitoring. In conclusion, it is almost inevitable that we are moving towards a more digital world in the healthcare industry. More medical devices are being created, and more devices are being connected to the internet. This, by default, increases the amount of security and privacy issues we could face. There are many laws and regulations put in place to protect the personal health information, like HIPAA, as well as other state regulations. Healthcare organizations also have large information security teams in place to ensure the safety of the data they are working with. Trained management also provides training and the best practices to their team to ensure they can keep their data safe and that their team is educated on the privacy laws their organization follows. Unfortunately, you can never be too sure that your organization is 100% safe from being attacked. Some of the largest data breaches have come from healthcare industries. An article from Nate Lord on the top 10 biggest healthcare data breaches of all time reveals the Anthem Blue Cross data breach of 2015 as being one of the largest healthcare data breaches ever, affecting over 78 million people. This cyber attack claimed names, social security numbers, home addresses, and dates of birth. Most of the victims were Anthem healthcare members as well as some non-members since Anthem handled a few smaller insurance companies as well. The second biggest healthcare data breach of all time was also in January of 2015, which affected more than 11 million people who are members of Primera Blue Cross. Social security numbers, addresses, birth dates, and even account numbers were stolen. This happened just six weeks after Anthem data breach occurred. Finally, the third largest data breach of Blue Cross Blue Shield occurred only eight months later, making it one of the most disastrous years of healthcare data breaches. This affected over 10 million people and the data breach lasted until December of that year. We can see that since 2015, the healthcare industry has learned a lot from its mistakes, but with new technologies and new devices continually being created, security and privacy must continue to evolve. This is why new careers are being created in this field, more money is being put into managing and training information security teams, and more importance is being put into this direction overall. It's not hard to say that information security will forever be a part of technology, but it is important for organizations to embrace this and, and to continue to provide training and develop new privacy policies to protect patient health data. Thank you.